my YouTube channel where I try to share with you my backyard permaculture food forest experience. I live here in Central Florida, in beautiful Zone 10A, not far from the ocean, and I'm gardening on top of a sandbar. In today's video, you know what this is? That's a pigeon pea. If you listen, you can hear it's a very cured pigeon pea. We're going to plant these all over the place. In today's stream, we're also going to pick some fruit. There are many things in full bloom. Actually, December in Florida is a heavy harvest season if you do it right. Now, I had a goal years ago to have year-round fruit. Oh, I hear my chickens getting active. And I've achieved that now. This is maybe 20 years after the goal was established. I achieved it a while ago, but now I'm at the point where I have almost always two or three things coming in food forest wise, and I keep adding. And you know, it ebbs and flows, so there'll be periods of time when I add more things and I, or I don't. A quick update, I made a recent video, you might check it out if you're interested on mealybugs. I've, I've actually had a a mealy bug issue on this palm tree. Hey, James Tropicals, good to see you. Yeah, and I sprayed the neem oil on it and a couple of times, I don't know if it fixed it, I wiped off the bugs, so that might've done more than anything, but I'm gonna keep applying it, getting ready to post a, another, another video. I plan to do a, at least a few videos to see how this kind of diluted neem oil spray stuff that I got at Lowe's works. sure is beautiful we had a actually a cold front go through it's been raining like crazy which is great because everything got a nice deep water and um, now it's cold I mean Florida cold it's probably in the 60s right now which feels very cold in Florida I know how ridiculous that sounds if you live in say Tennessee <laughs> quick update on the banana grove the Cavendish not disappointing I'd say the overall investment in this little clump that I made this year probably something like probably something like eighty dollars around a hundred dollars I spent on establishing a banana grove and I could have spent less and grown from pups you know that I took from other plants and all this kind of stuff but I just now I have a full-on Cavendish dwarf banana grove and that is what you want for sure if you want a lot of bananas I noticed that my one of my Florida green sugar canes fell over in the winds. It's interesting because I love that. That's the maturing sugars in the cane, which make it super delicious. So that is a delicious, delicious sugar cane to eat. The green Florida green, what they call Florida green sugar cane. But you can see it didn't it didn't snap it. It just kind of bent as a a healthy node it'll sprout a sugarcane almost every time and since we're talking about green sugarcane i'll show you some i've noticed real a real difference in germination speed and progress between the green and the red sugarcanes if you're interested in such a thing here we go this is the green you can see uh, well first of all it has a vigorous sprout really vigorous sprout but it takes a lot longer for it to to happen it seems like this is another green you can see the method i used to plant these i just submerged the node maybe an inch in soil stand them straight up all of these have sprouted here's another one and that's what i mean about the sprout it's kind of like a stout initial sprout the red however will sprout up right away it seems like and i have a lot of that on the side of my house did a live stream over the weekend where I showed that. If you're interested, check it out. Yeah, even David the Good showed up for that one. Let me know in the chat if you can hear the comms on this live stream. I'm worried I didn't connect the comms. I'm gonna put the camera down just for a second to make sure I have my headphones turned off. Chick, chick. Yeah, chick, chick.
Okay, good, back. So I'm gonna assume you can hear me. Let me know in the chat if you can hear my audio. Just wanna make sure. I had a snafu on the Sunday morning live stream. I actually didn't realize that the audio was off until I had already completed the whole stream. So I had a good conversation with myself though. It was nice. Yeah, so. I do wonder if anybody can hear me. Oh, thank you, Camel. Appreciate it. <laughs> it's like, oh man, am I went off again? I did check the I did check the microphone. Alright. Now just want to show. This is one of the best possible things to sa for saving seeds, which is the pigeon pea. This has been drying on the counter now for about two or three weeks. And when you dry the pigeon peas like that, oh, thanks, thanks everybody. I appreciate you letting me know you can hear me. <laughs> but yeah, when you dry them for, for that long, you have really hard cured pigeon peas that you can just put in a Ziploc bag and save. As long as you get all the water out of them, these save really well. And I believe they're genetic copies of the of the parent plant a lot of beans are like that they're not all like that but uh, some are affected by cross pollinating of other varieties and all kinds of things there's a really great day with a good video on that by the way but you can see it doesn't take long to get a handful of these now the peas that are on the bushes right next to me here are uh -oh, are also able to be planted even green like that but I find sometimes I've damaged them while planting them so I just thought I would bring out the ones that are yeah pigeon pea doesn't require anything other than to be planted and this is what the flowers look like they're really beautiful I think surprisingly beautiful you just produced ton this is a second fruiting of this particular branch you can see what the young Young pigeon peas looks like. Those are great for eating right there. But yeah, enough peas. I wanna get those ice cream beans, by the way. I was trying to find a way to get that. There are a couple different types of beans I'd like to add. That's one of them. I love these pigeon pea shells. As yeah, chop and drop, it's not much. Look at that. Now, I don't know why some some of the seeds are black and then others are this like tan, almost orange color. Seems like all these are. Yeah, the starfruit tree is absolutely macking. Now, anything I plant, we'll go over and check that out here in a second. It's almost, uh, oh, there we go. Okay, so I don't know why these are black, but I'm gonna say they both grow about the same. All right, and I have just a few more in my pocket, okay. Flower to fruit one year, maybe nine months, probably no more like nine months from planting these peas here. And they have nearly 100% germination rate success. Now I wanted to show you this, I planted this a couple days ago. This little guy right here, that's a pigeon pea that I planted from a green pigeon pea. And it has sprouted. You can see there's some nut sedge grass growing in there. It has sprouted uh, almost a day after I planted it, it seemed like, and this is maybe four or five days. Oh, the star fruit. All right, now, I planted some last night actually, but Let's see. All of these pots right here are planted with the green pigeon peas. Oops, I'm dropping them. I have these little pots here. I'm gonna go ahead and just plant them in here. And all I'm doing is just pressing them down in there. That's really it. Let me just put a couple in this one. Yeah, that'd be a good way. And then I'll throw I'll just throw a couple in there. Yeah, they'll probably all grow. 
I'll just transplant them. Uh, good news on planting both <clears throat> both Chinese fan palm and on um, oh, what's the name of the the date palm that I planted. It's gonna the name is going to escape me. Very thorny date palm, Senegal date palm. Yeah, this is the Senegal date palm right here. All little Senegal date palms, and also the Chinese fan palm is also growing. You can see in this pot, those are all the chickens actually got to those and ate off the top. They were delicious, apparently. And then right next to it, the Eureka. So, you know, lots of different palm experimentation going. What I'm doing is growing them up to a certain size, and then I'll just transplant them into pots, separate them. This is a Robolini dwarf date palm. Doesn't look that great right now, but it's just fine. I'll be giving it some bunny manure. A little Eureka next to that. This whole area I'm revamping. You see it in transition. <laughs> All right, so I just planted a bunch of pigeon peas. I do not have a Bismarckia, I do not. But I've been thinking of getting one. Here we are. Yep, I'd say there is a few. There are a few star fruit on this tree. This tree fills in the gap beautifully for mangoes. They're almost opposite seasons. Man, I wish you could smell this. It smells incredible. It's like a flower. But yep, that's a perfectly ripe star, ripe star fruit. If you don't know already, incredibly easy to grow from seeds, but very tender when young, very fragile. Um, another thing to know about star fruit is that, that if you have sensitivities with, uh, I think with kidneys, I think there's can be some risk with eating these because of the type of acid that or whatever crystals that are in this thing. We eat them, and I think they're delicious. They only sell them in August there, though. Oh, man. This is actually a great in internal inside plant. If you could grow this in a, in a greenhouse, it would actually, I think, be fantastic because you could get so much fruit. And as long as you could keep it in enough humidity, because it will require the humidity, and prevent it from getting cold, you're going to have a good harvest now one of the things i was showing in the last video was well i'm providing so much nutrients now to everything in my yard that it's just going off level five everywhere and uh, one of the things that recently happened was this edward has bloomed flowers earlier than it has ever bloomed and it looks healthier and stronger than it has ever looked this tree has struggled for years and now this is one year after applying the the vermiculture worm tea and the bunny manure consistently and also, also one, a couple other things, but also the micronutrients, which I've been doing through just a granular supplement. But those three things, and oh, and watering, you know, other things, but watering and consistent trimming, now it is just going off. Uh, problem is, I don't know the mango flowers, whoo, almost fell over. I don't know the mango flowers are gonna love the cold temperatures that may come. So it could get cold. Every once in a while it gets cold in this area of Florida. So if it does, it'll burn these mango flowers. Maybe it'll flower again. Problem is, I thought it was just this goofy Edward mango tree, but now I can see that my Hayden, you see this beast, cousin it, it is also starting to throw out flowers. And you know, if I had to guess, I would say probably this Tommy Atkins will be the next one to jump in line and start throwing out flowers. This Fairchild mango I've got growing here has also, its first shoot is a flower shoot. <laughs> That's kind of cool though. And now I haven't seen the, the Kesser. Oh, Kesser's got a, a flower shoot on it. So yeah, everything thinks it's summer. Or everything has just got, this one again has had so much bunny manure. I mean, I think the fertilizer just prompts it to jump. And that's probably my error. All right, let's see here. 
Look at this little ever-bearing mul mulberry tree that I planted not long ago. Just did my secret technique, which is not going to be a secret here in about 10 seconds. And that, that is to, right before, a, you know it's going to rain for a couple few days, or during, the beginning of it, you go and get cuttings and plant them in the ground where you want them to be. And I found that that it results in high success in germination. This is a mulberry that's very easy to grow in almost any factor, but when you plant it that way, you're good to go. Look at it, already. How satisfying is that? Already mulberries. Another great one for inside this time of year if you had to. Of course, they'll take a little bit of cold. I'm pretty pleased with this, this uh, longan tree trimming. I had, it was much higher and I trimmed down the center, kind of left two primary things, uh, branches sticking up and tried to promote this lower growth and it just looks so healthy. Really is skyline management to some extent because this was a big, because this was a big uh, sunlight blocker, got all the sun coming down this way and uh, it blocks the rest of that forest. Of course, it's already kind of dark back in there anyway but uh, you're not gonna avoid that if you have fruit trees. I don't think it's just that we keep this passing lane open and you can see the difference of the sun and the not sun transition. The yin and the yang of my yard. And you can also see a transition here of darker soil to much more sandy soil. And actually, if you look down here, you see what the actual soil looks like, it's sand. But I do, augment it with topsoil. So I just get topsoil and bring it in, place it on top, and you can see that I've got more topsoil there than to the right, but that was about maybe 15 bags of topsoil spread throughout this general area, and I'll probably get some more and uh, spread it throughout here. Stay tuned for the compost flip video. I've been developing these compost bins for about the last year, and uh, they're about ready to go. I don't know, I keep piling stuff in them and they keep going down, so I don't understand. Maybe I, At some point I just thought maybe they just are going down into the earth at this point because I filled them to the top so many times that uh, I guess it's just amazing to me how much they can compress over time. We keep them watered and so on. Got the pitchfork ready. See that pitchfork? Yeah, I'm stoked on that. We've been using the pitchfork a lot for the chickens too, I mean, Oh, turning over the soil back in the chicken run. You just kind of put the fork in and kind of turn it over and any bugs and stuff they can eat. And I think it creates an interesting environment for them, but that's something I got from Edible Acres. Shout out to Edible Acres. By the way, those chicken techniques used over there have paid off. I'm nowhere near that level of uh, expert ability yet, but the idea of really seeing the chickens as part of a, a system, a cycle. I think the, the rabbits are certainly the same way. I am way overdue for cleaning out that rabbit run. And the reason it can be way overdue is because one of the things I learned about, about rabbits was that, well, first of all, how cool they are for just pets, really interesting, cool creatures, but Another thing was that they, they really have no smell whatsoever. So they're scentless, practically, which makes them really pleasant. And even their manure is almost scentless. So, you know, it does, it's not like you have to clean it every day. It's nothing like, uh, you know, say a cat or a dog or even a chicken. And the chickens have not had a smell either. And that's because I, I think I've been pretty consistent with infusing wood in and turning it over and, and kind of getting that natural let's say natural composting process occurring and also inside the coop itself you know their chicken droppings you just kind of stir it up and let the, the droppings kind of fall down in layers in the wood chips and then it, it always kind of keeps like a clean layer of, of uh, wood chips on the top for them to walk on and it also starts a composting process so then when I'm ready to clean it it's very very simple I, I just back up a cart that I have it's actually filled with water right now. I use it as a rain catchment too. Just wheel that over and pour it wherever I want to pour it. But I just put
put that thing right up under here, open this, it clicks in up top, and then I just pull with a rake all the chips out. And when I'm cleaning it, of course, I shut the door to the entranceway so these sweet little hands don't get confused or upset. But um, then I, we've been taking, and let me know what you think about this, but we've been taking the bedding from the inside of the coop and just putting it in a pile back in the chicken run, and we find that, you know, sometimes there's ants and stuff in the chicken bedding, but all those ants get eaten, the chickens go back there and just annihilate it, and they spread it everywhere in a matter of hours. And before you know it, they are just it, they're composting it back into the soil. And I think as a result, what we're building here is just an incredible, and you see now I have, I have chicken wire everywhere to prevent them from flying out, but still they can fly out if they really want to. But they don't really want to. I mean, they've got a lot of what they need. Oh, look at this. Hello. Hello. This is such a peaceful time of the night for the chickens. What a beautiful bird. What a beautiful, beautiful bird. Bard Rock. Oh, yeah. You're a sweetheart, aren't you? You're a sweetheart. Hey, I don't know, but I'm curious. I haven't actually... I haven't grabbed the eggs in the last couple of days because it's been raining. So we might as well go in and see what what we've got waiting for us. Hello. Oh, don't get it. No, 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 no. I got one out. One, one escape fee. Just one lucky chicken. The rest of you are trapped in here with me. Although I come in here every week and I hose back all of these pavers that I have here, they just are composting everywhere. They they kick the everything everywhere, <laughs> which is fine. But midweek it is just piled up. Well, well, well. Look at you. All right, you got to go in there. All right. Gotta get those eggs. That's three days worth of eggs. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's a lot of eggs. I know just who to give them to. Can't eat them fast enough, of course, but it's been a lot of fun giving them away. <laughs> People love them who I give them to. I swear they make you feel happy. And you know what? The brain research actually kind of. See what she's doing there? They do that because they think you're the rooster. They're about to make sweet little chickies. All right, we do have one rogue chicken. I've, I've constructed finally a very simple chicken containment door. You can see it's just a curved piece of wire with a wire to attach it. And that seems to work pretty well. These chickens were still fully capable of flying six feet in the air. Uh, this earlier today, one of the chickens I saw fly up and land on here. That's over six feet tall. So they're fully capable. They just don't do it much. Oh, look at you. You're going to eat up all my grass. You're going to eat up all my grass. Don't do that. Okay, here, you go in here. Yes. No, no. Okay. I think I'm going to let the bunny out. Hey, bunny. Hmm. Penelope or Thumper? Thumper. Penelope has had, I think, more outside time today than Thumper. That is the I'm ready to get out of the cage position. Always goes there. Every time. When you get ready to take him out. Thumper's living up to his name. You see how I, I leave the 
the types of woods they love in here. So they can chew on the bark on this oak and this longan and the fig. And kind of get down in more or less a more natural habitat. They love to be in this area. And after all, this is the Zen Bunny Run, so I think this is a very Zen thing to do. And uh, one thing we discovered was that chickens and bunnies cohabitate very well. This is a very re reproducible system. I'm actually gonna make a video on how you could easily re replicate this system I've got here. But this becomes a cool little pasture spot for the for the animals to play together almost. They don't really have much interest in each other. But it does seem like the rabbit gets a little bit more personality when the chickens are around, not like in a nervous way, but almost like it does make more contented. But this bunny run has just been a fantastic way to utilize an edge space, permaculture principle, utilizing edge spaces, utilize an edge space to interact with the systems and function stack them even further, which is to say you're getting the cool, fun benefit of, of uh, being able to sit and pet the chicken or pet the, the bunny on the Zen bunny run bench that I built. By the way, that bench design, I'm very pleased with it. It was just simply two four by fours, which, which I cut in half and then buried them. So they're deep in there. That was two, I believe eight foot four by fours, whatever the ones you are, you get for fence posts. And, uh, then a couple of pressure treated two by fours as the cross supports. Two by fours, I went on both sides. One across the across the bottom, so it is built solid. And then some decking. Those are decking uh, boards. That bench design has been pretty much perfect. What are you doing? rain flaps built this so that the rain flaps could be retracted and I finally put a finishing roof on top so now I have a you know a little makeshift roof this thing will be of no match to a hurricane this thing though is just an old raft reminds me of that raft in Jaws By the way, if you have any interest in sharks, you gotta go check out my surfing channel, Surf All Day, A, one A, letter A, number one, letter A. And uh, just check out some of the shark videos I captured recently of uh, friends of mine falling on tops of schools of sharks, surfing with schools of sharks. When you have the drone, you just get to see what's been out there the whole time from a totally different perspective. And it turns out you're, you're basically surfing with jaws every single time. And when you fly it with the drone, it's just amazing. I got, I had a pol I have polarized lens, which is. Uh oh, getting the call. Yeah, well, that actually may be my signal to go. I think that's dinner being called in. So hey, I, I appreciate you though jumping on the live stream. It was super fun. Uh, thinking of actually doing some more live streams in the evening, maybe doing from the studio, so to speak. Uh, stay tuned for some upcoming videos. I've got several of them coming out over the next two weeks and I've uh, been working on quite a bit. Some of them a little bit more, uh, you know, outside of the normal of what I normally put out. So stay tuned for that. Let me know what you think in the chat. By the way, if you are not already subscribed, please subscribe to Eat Your Backyard. And I hope you have a wonderful Christmas holiday season with you and yours. And don't forget to click that like button. Thanks for watching. Eat Your Backyard.